Hello, this is Michelle Sizemore at michellesizemore.com. I'm a creative memories advisor, and today you'll learn how to make this um, page using squares from our square punch. And I also use the Creative Memories 12 inch trimmer and the papers that I used were from the Tropic Time collection. I'm gonna set this aside and show you the papers that I used. I have these in one of our new sleeves. These are great to put things in just for like a single project and they open from the top and the side and you just slip it in. It just helps keep things together. <clears throat> these are the papers that I used and I love all of these colors and I love the patterns too. So I'm going to show you, I used two different types of orange just to make it interesting. These are two different patterns. I use two patterns of blue. I'll get the other one out in just a minute. These little sunshines. Here's the other pattern of blue. Here's the other pattern of yellow. And then this is what I use for the background. And this is what I use for the square in the middle. Or you could use our white ruled paper if you want to use it to write a poem or something in the middle. Okay, I'm going to set all of these aside. And I will show you how I cut the squares. Now I have already pre-cut most of them and I put them in this little box. These little boxes are great. They're fairly new from Creative Memories. They latch really tight. The latches are really strong. You just flip them to open and it's just a great place to store all these little loose things. I also use these to store my pens, adhesives, pencils, um, miscellaneous little things. Okay, to cut a square, literally all you do is put your paper inside the slit right there, push it all the way back, and punch. And then move it over just to make sure you're not getting the cut part um, interfering with your square, and then punch. Move it, make sure it's all the way back. Get as close as you can to that other one so you don't waste paper and punch. So that's how you use this. And I punched out all of these squares with that using the papers that I just showed you. Alrighty, I'm going to get my background piece, which is right here. It's just a little subtle background. I wanted a subtle background since the papers are pretty busy. And... I basically just take my squares and I start mounting them. I'm going to just position the top row first before I mount it, just so you can see. And I'm just going to position it just like I did the ones in the sample. This, there's the little sunshines, there's this one, and this one, okay? They're not positioned perfectly, but that's just the color scheme that I'm going to go with. So, I'm going to mount the first one first. I'm going to put a little dab at every corner of repositionable tape runner. You want about that much to show of the background on the side and top. And I didn't do any specific measuring. I just sort of eyeballed this and looked at it to get it the way I liked it. And I'm not gonna mount this whole thing to spend all that time, but I'm just gonna mount the top row and a couple more to show you how I did this. It's really good to use the repositionable tape runner because you might find that you have to pick up and reposition a little bit to get this just right. I can already tell that I'm gonna to need to do that a little bit but not much. Okay, so I'm gonna watch my corners. I'm gonna come in just a little bit on this corner. Okay, and then I'm gonna move these over just a tad to get them in sync. This is why the repositionable tape runner is great because you do have to sometimes pick up and move around to get things the way you like it. Just basically want to get about the same spacing you can between each one. I'm not going to get them perfect, but 
you get the idea. Okay, and then you start going down this way and mount this one here, this one here, this one here, here, here. I'm just using this as my pattern, okay? And I would mount those down, kind of get them straight and lined up the way I like them. And then work my way across the bottom, matching up my patterns and so on until I go all the way around. And then when I'm done, I would put this piece of paper in the middle or it could be a photo, a big, a big photo that's cut seven and three fourths inches or it could be a ruled piece of paper that you cut seven and three fourths inches square. Um, and if you cut a real piece of paper, I could picture this being used as a title page. I, a long time ago, um, when my kids were little, I used a quilt page as a title page and the, and I found online, um, a title poem called, oh, it was something like this book is like a comforter, a quilt with many hearts, something, 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 and a place to warm our hearts. It was a perfect title page because it kind of looked like a quilt, but it went with scrapbooking. And I'm sure you can find that just by Googling it. Back then, I don't think I had Google. I know I didn't have Google, so I just, I did look it up on the internet. But anyway, I love this as a title page. I love these colors in the Tropic Time collection. I think they, they're great. They're light and cheery and they make me think of summer and they make me want to go somewhere like Hawaii or, um, uh, St. Thomas, somewhere like that. I'd love to be there right now. It's kind of cold outside at home. So whatever. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that idea and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.